Let us open the service with a prayer written by Reverend James Wagner. Let us pray. O God, whose grace and mercy flows like an endless river, help each one of us place ourselves in the path of your boundless love and limitless compassion. As we hear your message to us today, may we find our spirits renewed, our bodies healed, our minds cleared, and our hearts overflowing with your love, forgiveness, and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Join me in a prayer of confession. Merciful God, we admit to you that too often we try to cover up our sinfulness with pleasant-sounding words, generous deeds, and helpful activities. We need your help. Forgive us when we bypass your desires. Forgive us when we lose sight of your values and yearnings for each of us. Guide us in getting our priorities straight. Lord, we bring to you the matters of our hearts and consciences that need to be forgiven by you. We ask for forgiveness and seek to repent of the areas of our lives where we have put ourselves in the centre instead of having you in the centre. Lord, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Almighty and merciful God, grant us remission of our sins, true repentance, amendment of life and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father, glory be to the Son, glory be to the Holy Ghost, glory be to the Father, glory be to the Son, glory As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end, world without end. Bible reading comes from Matthew 9 verses 1 to 8 in the New International Version. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, 
Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, take your mat, and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they praised God, who had given such authority to man. This is the word of the Lord. Today we're going to explore the concept of healing. But it really will be an introductory session to healing because there are so many different ways that God heals us. But I want to start with this question. In what area of your life may you be feeling paralyzed today? Are you perhaps in a situation at work where you feel the environment is beyond your control to handle? Or are you perhaps a person who is listening to this message while you are in prison, literally in prison, and you're struggling with the reality of confinement? Some people struggle with an emotional issue that can keep them from truly experiencing life to its fullest. And they can feel paralyzed in that area of their lives. A sense of paralysis about problems can also relate to financial difficulties where try as you may you feel that you just cannot keep your head above water financially. We can even feel paralyzed by children when our children have taken a path contrary to what we had hoped for that can make us feel helpless and paralyzed in a sense. So the question for us to ask today is this, where do we find hope and healing from these various disruptions and strains in our lives? In what area of your life do you need healing the most today? Think about that as we journey through this message. Now hear the words of Matthew 9 verses 2. It says this, Some men brought to him a paralyzed man, lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Now in the times of Jesus, the houses had flat roofs on which one could actually walk with an outside staircase leading up to the roof. And we hear in the story that a group of compassionate friends were willing to put themselves out for the sake of their paralyzed friend. They were in fact willing to literally carry a heavy load to seek help for their friend. This group of men were not easily discouraged because they risked themselves, because they knew that the owner of the house may have misunderstood them because they would have broken the roof of the house to get in. They realized they could have been criticized by the owner, but they were willing to take that risk. And so this first thing really raises a very important point for us about healing. And that is this, healing involves risk. It involves taking some form of risk. Now you may be listening to this and thinking, I don't need any healing at the moment. I'm actually doing okay. Now if that is true for you, I rejoice with you. I really rejoice with you. But there may be someone else in your life who you know needs healing. And from this verse, we hear that it was the faith of the people around the paralyzed man that, causes, that caused Jesus to act, that caused Jesus to heal him. Has that ever happened to you? Where you may have been so ill, 
so downhearted, so crushed, so broken, that you did not have the strength to pray for yourself, let alone have faith for your own healing. Yet the faith of those around you, the prayer and the cares of those around you, caused Jesus to act on your behalf. In the same way, your faith for the person in your life that is broken or ill or hurting today can bring about healing for them. Your faith can bring healing to your children, to that child that has taken a path contrary to what you wanted. Your faith can bring that child back on track through your prayers. Now the question is this, faith in what? We don't want to have faith in faith. We must have faith in Jesus Christ to do the impossible. Only faith in Jesus, not faith in anything else. But you see, for this to occur, we need to be prepared to make ourselves vulnerable. If we don't share our pain with another believer, then how can they know that we need prayer? In the words of Jesus, take heart. That means have courage in sharing with someone you trust what you are going through so that they may pray for you. If we are well and if we are healthy today, then our challenge today is to lean into the heart of God for someone else. Are we willing to do that? Now listen to the words of verses 5 to 7 of the passage. It says this, Jesus talking. Which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man, that is Jesus, has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up and take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and he went home. Just imagine that scene, a man who's paralyzed, suddenly restored and able to walk. See, Jesus is essentially showing us here that he is God. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the living Son of God. And he's showing us that because he wants us to know that he has the authority to forgive sins. But no one could literally see if the man's sins were forgiven in that particular moment. So the onlookers were, wouldn't have been convinced that Jesus had forgiven his sins because there was no evidence in front of them of that. So instead, Jesus did something visible and tangible to show that he was truly the Son of God. Therefore, he did the more difficult thing. He instructed the man to walk. And in doing so, they would witness a miracle and they would also then know that Jesus could do the easier thing, which is to forgive sins. The question for us is this, who do we say Jesus is? You see, this is a very important question and your answer to this question is very, very important because it will feed into every single area of your life and it will either bring you life or it will bring you frustration if you don't believe the truth about who he is. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? That he has the power to heal you every area of your life? Do you believe that he has the authority to forgive sins and to give us a second chance to give us eternal life? Let us ponder verse 6 more deeply. Why did Jesus say to the man, take up your mat and go home? You see, he wanted the, the paralyzed man to show faith. In order to show faith, the paralyzed man had to do something that was impossible. Note that Jesus didn't say to him, 
you are healed. He didn't just say you are healed. Rather, he told the man to do something. The man had to literally take a step of faith. He had to take a risk to receive his healing. He told the man to act as if he was healed. And therein lies that first truth that we heard just a little bit earlier, that in order to receive healing, you have to take a risk. Now what step of faith or what risk do we need to take in order to gain healing? Is there somebody we need to call? Is there an appointment we need to keep? Do we need to stop drinking alcohol? What risk, what step of faith do we need to take if we want to be healed? The question many of us have today is this, does Jesus still heal today? Well, scripture tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, he still heals today. And the remarkable thing is that he uses ordinary people to bring about extraordinary healing. That's the incredible thing. Jesus can heal us through doctors, through medicine, through faith, through a miracle, through prayer. In fact, any way that he chooses. Sometimes healing comes to us in the most unexpected of ways. A conversation with a stranger, an encounter with an unexpected person. One injury that we have may actually lead to healing of another particular issue in our lives. Has that ever happened to you? That has happened to me. We just don't know how God will act to heal. But that's exciting. It's exciting. An important aspect of healing that we must keep in mind though is God's timing. God's timing is a very real thing. It is something we cannot force. It is something we cannot push. We cannot manipulate God's timing. It is something we simply need to wait on. We can be tempted though to give up during the waiting. But it is in fact in the waiting when God whispers his truth to us. When he helps to build our trust in him. When he refines us and gets rid of of the rusty edges if if we are willing to surrender those moments to him so in this moment now i wonder if you would sit with your hands open and pointed upward if you feel comfortable doing so as a gesture of openness to receiving from god and in the quiet of this moment Speak out to God what it is you are seeking healing for. Name the area of your life. Be specific where you need Jesus' miraculous touch. And imagine Jesus right next to you, touching the specific area of your body or your life and bringing light and healing into your life. Now, as you linger in this moment with God, I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you today, believing that you are the great physician. Where doctors and medicine have limitations, you have no limitations. Nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. Lord, for many of us, we have suffered with illness for prolonged periods of time. Lord, we pray for mercy. We ask for supernatural intervention to relieve us of our physical pain. For others going through a financial crisis at this time, Lord, we pray for abundant and new resources to be poured into their life. Gracious Father, we ask that you will heal us from emotional wounds dating back to our childhoods. God, wounds that we may not even be aware of 
but that are still impacting our lives. From Heal us, God, from the words and the deeds that still play in our heads from when we were young. Help us to break the cycles of negative thoughts that we may be set free. Help our unbelief and increase our faith. Almighty God, we ask for healing from every form of paralysis in our lives. Jesus, you are able. Please lead us to where we may find healing in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I would like you to email me and to get in touch with me if you need prayer for healing in any area of your life or if you've experienced healing from Jesus through this message and by his power alone, I would love to hear your story. Thank you. of intercession today are based on a prayer from the Methodist Church in South Africa. Let us bring our prayers for others to God now. Lord our God, we pray for your church in the world that we may be a light to the nations and bring peace, healing and hope to people. We pray for the leaders of our church, for our church council, for those in the presbytery who minister to the poor and the suffering, grant them your spirit, that the flame of your love may burn brightly. Blessed Trinity, God of the Jubilee, we turn to you for the life of the Queensland Synod. Where there is generosity found in us, expand it with your grace. Where our longing for newness has run dry, refresh it with your truth. Where there is creativity of heart, deepen it with your wisdom. Where there is hope for reconciliation and your power to make us one. Raise us up in honesty of mind, passion for justice and courage to choose your way. Turn your face to us in grace, O God, and breathe into us the life of your spirit. We long for justice. We long for peace. We long for an ending of oppression so that the songs of freedom and love would one day rise in joy from every place. Give us the courage and the hope to lift up high the cross in all the corners of the world, in the south, in the west, in the north and the east. Fill us with your love so that we may gladly speak for you, work for you, and live our whole life for you, 
until all the nations of the earth join with us in endless praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.